my name is Chance Peregrine, and I'm going to talk about the things that I'm incredibly dysphoric about. The first thing is, I know that Noah Finch just did a video on this, but I thought it would be a good idea for me to make a video before starting my medical transition and then after like a few years into it because I feel like that'd be the best way to gauge how much it's changed. Uh, so I'm going to start off with my face as that is what most people see day to day on my social media when I'm talking to them, whatever. So first of all, I have no eyebrow. Like I've darkened it so that you can see it but it's still barely there. Like I s still have no eyebrow and that's frustrating because I want these big thick manly eyebrows. Like huge fucking eyebrows. And then my next one is my lack of facial hair which I've also been darkening like the peach fuzz that I get because I've actually learned that I can lengthen it using coconut oil and that seems to help a lot with some of the facial hair dysphoria, but still not quite the same. And next is my lips. I have incredibly thick lips and I feel like it makes me feel like look very feminine and it feels very feminine to have such thick lips. And a lot of people are like, I'm so jealous you have such thick lips. Like I want your lips and it's like, it sucks because first of all, they make me dysphoric and I'm incredibly uncomfortable because of them. Uh, and second of all, when they get chapped, it hurts like hell <laughs> because there's more surface area to get chapped. So that means there's more of a potential for pain. And last on my face, is just the general shape of it. It's very, I have a very round face and it sucks because I wish I had a more defined jaw, which that, you could probably chalk that up to just me being like a chubbier guy. Uh, like I'm, I'm pretty chubby. Like I've got, I've got a lot of chub. So that's probably one reason why my face is so round, but that is something that I want to change sometime in the future just because it makes me so dysphoric and uncomfortable. The next is my neck. I wish I had a thicker neck. Like, a manly thick neck. But something that has helped with this is the fact that I've been lifting weights for the past couple years. Like, I'm going into my second full year uh, of lifting weights, which is going to be great because I'm hoping to start testosterone as soon as I get a job. Like that's my first priority. Uh, so that has helped a lot with like the shoulder neck area because it has caused more of a manly definition here, I guess. It's, it's not quite as much of like a taper, but more just squarish and broad which that has helped me not only pass a lot, but it's also made me more comfortable with my body. Moving down, it's my chest. Uh, I bind way too much and I shouldn't. And I advise so many people that I know not to bind too much, but I do it myself. It's not fun. I ended up hurting my rib one time just because I wore it for way over 12 hours. Uh, I woke up at like 6 that morning, didn't take it off until 1 in the morning the next day. And that hurt a lot because, you know, it's just this pressure and, well, my chest was tender because, surprise, surprise, my organs hate me. Uh, <laughs> so there was that going on, it just hurt, I was in pain, and I hated it. And, but I didn't want to take my binder out because I hate my chest. It is one of the biggest dysphoria areas for me, next to what I'm going to talk about next, which is my hips. My hips, they are incredibly wide, which is also contributed to by the fact that I am chubby. Me being chubbier has added fat to my hips and made them look wider. 
And a weird thing that I've been doing lately is trying to alleviate my dysphoria by going into the mirror shirtless and just squishing on my hips to move the fat up. And I don't hate it. <laughs> I, I much would rather just be chubby with narrower, narrow hips in like a wider waist because that would actually make me a lot happier because I'd be like, hell yeah, this is a manly body. This is body I can get behind. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so there's that. Now my thighs, well, actually, let's talk what's between them. That is a big problem area for me. Like, I can't stand to look at it. I Going to the bathroom's rough. <laughs> Cause it's like, I don't want to think about it. Sometimes I hold it for as long as I possibly can, just so I don't have to acknowledge what's down there. Uh, so my bottom dysphoria is pretty bad, but not as bad as like my hips and my chest because for the most part, unless I'm showering or pissing or whatever, I don't, I don't have to pay attention to it that much. I pack and that does it for me most of the time. Uh, now next is my thighs. My thighs, they are incredibly thick. And while I do believe thick thighs save lives, they do not work for me. Because, uh, first of all, it causes a lot of chafing in between my legs, which is typically thought of as a female thing, as women tend to have thicker thighs. And I don't want that. So, the fact that my thighs have so much fat on them, it, ru it ruins me. Uh, I, I don't like looking at my thighs in the mirror, it makes me feel oddly disproportionate. And along with my butt, like my butt is so huge. And it probably looks bigger to me just because I'm so uncomfortable with it. But to me it looks humongous. Like, it, it just doesn't look right on me. <laughs> I, that is another thing I want to be done or like redistributed when I start testosterone is just, I'm fine with it like going up to my face or my belly. Like I'm fine with that. Like as long as it gets it away from some of the more problem areas for me, I'm fine with wherever the fat redistributes to. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is my feet, and that's because I have small feet for a man. Uh, and while I am pretty short for a man as well, being 5'8", uh, my feet just don't feel like it's the right size for me, <laughs> like compared to my height. Uh, I wear a size 8 or 9, depending on the brand. Uh, in men's which is not fun because it makes it hard for me to find shoes in most places <laughs> because I have wider feet so I can't exactly wear kids shoes but I <laughs> but I can't really find that many men's shoes in eight or nines that I actually like because it's just genuinely hard to find men, like men's shoes in smaller sizes. And now I'm just gonna talk about like some of the overall things like my voice. God, I can't wait for my voice to be lowered. Like, I, I actually did some like voice training with a piano just to practice moving my voice lower into my chest so that I can talk uh, lower, but it still doesn't help that much. It's helped a little bit. Like, I'll look back at old videos where I'm talking and I just cringe at how high my voice is. And it sucks because some, some videos that I have on my phone, I still love, but I can't really watch them without being uncomfortable because of dysphoria. Uh, and then finally, is, I need to silence, put my phone on ring, 
not ringer, vibrate next time. Uh, but next off is what's inside my body uh, that I so desperately want to tear out. Uh, my reproductive organs, I hate even knowing that they're in there. Like, I feel, I feel like tearing them out uh, whenever I remember that they're there. Uh, like, Shark Week. That is absolute hell for me because it makes me acknowledge things that I usually don't acknowledge. And that's not fun. So, <laughs> I try to deal with that as much as I can, but until I'm able to get like a hysterectomy or whatever, I have to deal with the fact that I have organs that don't align with what I want to be, with what I am, uh, just kind of being and chilling inside of me. Uh, so that was my dysphoria like overall. Uh, there's a there's like smaller things that I don't want to get into the details of, but maybe I can make another video about that. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.